and welcome back everyone to the video series dedicated show on MTV that has crowned its champions for the season. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge Season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies, Episode 19, The Finals, Part 2, The End All Be All, but let's do a small recap of how we got to this point, and that was... Emmanuel and Amanda leaving during the night of eliminations. We got to the final eight who are able to go to TJ's finals and they do a solo portion for the first three checkpoints last episode. And where we left off was that everybody was put into two teams of four and they were going to be running in cells or teams until TJ says otherwise. And that's where this episode starts with everybody taking off to get to checkpoint four. And once they do, there is a cage with a giant rope wrapped around it, inside it, all around. And they're gonna have to undo this rope to see that there is a safe inside the cage. Then all the team members have to make their way into the water, swim to a buoy where there are symbols on cards underneath the water. You have to memorize your own card. Then, once you get all your symbols, make your way back to your safe and decode it to get a number and the combination to the safe. You have to open up your safe, grab your key, and then make your way up the mountain to the next checkpoint. Now, the purple team was first to get their rope untangled, first in the water, and then when the orange team was getting ready to make their way to the buoy, that's when Nelson was having some trouble. He was tired, he feels more comfortable swimming when he has a life jacket on, which would make it much more difficult trying to get underneath the water, but as he was trying to make his way to the buoy, that's when he called for a boat to come pick him up. And so with that, Nelson is taken back to shore and somebody else on the orange team has to pick up the slack and memorize Nelson's card code so that they can open up their safe. Purple team unlocks the safe and then they take off well before the orange team can. They have a good head start, but this is the point of the finals where Devin is struggling. This hike up this mountain is not his forte and we can see it here as the purple team has like a couple of minutes head start, has a bit of a lead, but this is where the orange team is much more consistent in their pacing. They are a little bit more balanced in endurance with each other, that they just stay at a consistent pace where the purple team wants to kick it into another gear, but Devin is constantly slowing everybody down. He needs to take it to a slow walk. He wants to take breaks. And then we have CT kind of motivating Devin where he's like talking behind him and he's like, oh, you want me to hold your hand like we're back in kindergarten? And it was just really funny. It kind of reminded me of Gauntlet 3 CT, not like overly like yelling and getting into Big Easy's face, but it was more subtle digs to try to motivate Devin, but Devin was just not having it. He was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm not built for this. But even with Devin struggling, they get to checkpoint five first, and they find that they have this torpedo that has a chain around it and a lock. They have to unlock their torpedo, unravel the chain, pick it up, and then take it quite a distance to another puzzle. And this is where the orange team makes up some ground. They do it in like one quick motion where they get to the torpedo, unlock it, easily strip off the chains, pick it up, and then just walk away with it. Where the purple team is still like undoing the chain. I don't know what was taking them so long because the orange team came up behind them and still took off. They were doing a good job working together. They were switching out shoulders. They were communicating well with each other, whereas the purple team was having to stop because of Devin. He was like veering off course. He was yelling that he needed breaks. He was just dropping the torpedo. You can tell that the rest of the team was just frustrated with him. The orange team gets their puzzle first and what they have to do is they have four squares made up of torpedoes on the ground. They have to move three torpedoes to make it three squares. And this is why CT and Devin are on the same team and it benefits them because even if Devin is struggling physically, if there is a puzzle and orange team struggles, this is where the purple team can really excel. And they do because the orange team gets a whole bunch of checks. They're trying everything. They just can't get it. But the purple team shows up. CT solves this thing in less than like five seconds. They destroy their puzzle and they are heading off. Orange team, luckily, maybe they saw it out of the corner of their eyes. They were trying to cheat off of them. Somehow they figure it out not too long after the purple team does. So the orange team is taking off after the purple team. The next checkpoint, checkpoint six, they get to these big old metal balls that we saw from last season and even this season when Corey and Logan were on top of the balls doing that uh, rope burn elimination. 
you had to move these balls down the pathway to where you're gonna be spending the night. So this is the final stretch. And like TJ said, you don't wanna be the last cell at the campsite on night one. So Purple Team is in a great lead. And I have to say that at this point, I was like, there's no way the Orange Team is gonna be able to surpass the Purple Team heading into night one because the trail was so thin that the ball took over the whole trail. For the orange team to catch up and even pass, they would have to do some crazy maneuver to get past the purple team and take first place. Orange team gets to their ball, but they know that they're in dire, desperate situation here. So they just decide to push the ball instead of waiting for everybody to get on their gloves and come up with a real strategy. Nelson pushed this ball and it goes directly off the trail and they are done. Like it sinks them heading into meeting up with TJ for the night portion checkpoint. They were able to get their ball back up on the trail, make their way, but purple team gets there first, then the orange team gets their second. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, there's something with the night portion. Maybe the purple team gets better sleeping arrangements, Maybe they're gonna have an elimination. However, TJ just says, get some rest and I'll see you in the morning. So everybody's coming into the cave. I'm thinking that, is there gonna be something that people are gonna have to hold, dunk their faces in ice water, stand on a stump? No, everybody gets the same sleeping arrangements. They get the same sleeping bags, the yoga mats, the inflatable pillows. So this was a pretty tame night portion compared to a lot of the other finals that we've watched in seasons past. Everybody has a pretty tough night's sleep on rocks and in this cave. And then we get to the morning portion where TJ is sounding the alarm for everybody to join him. And once they do, that's when TJ makes the announcement that they will be having an elimination. The orange team will be going head to head in the back me up elimination that we saw in episode one. It's gonna be best two out of three. Kyle's gonna go up against Nelson, Casey versus Nani. The first matchup up is Kyle versus Nelson. This is very much like a reverse tug of war where both men are very physical, but I think what helps Kyle win this elimination is his length. Kyle was able to really stretch out his arms to get to that ledge and then pull Nelson and himself over that two times in a row. Kyle wins two to nothing. Sadly, Nelson is being eliminated in the middle of the finals. What I thought was very heartwarming was TJ giving Nelson some words of encouragement, saying that he played a fantastic season. We'll see him in the future. Keep your head up. And I really enjoyed that moment that TJ had with Nelson. And then we have the emotional elimination between Casey and Nani, both women are crying, heading into this elimination. This elimination went on for a lot longer than I expected. I know MTV was trying to push this to be very heartbreaking, but one point in the confessionals, Nani says that I will be giving it all I got, but not really. I'm only gonna go to a certain extent. And even with Nani going 100%, I think that Casey can take her going 70 to 80%. So we're not getting everybody's full potential here because both women are very, frustrated and heartbroken that one of them won't be able to see the end of these finals. We get to round one, Casey wins, and then we get to round two. And right before we hit round two, this is another thing that watered it down, was that Casey says, are you sure you don't want to win to Nani? Saying that she will lay down her game. Nani then says in her confessionals that she thinks Casey has what it takes to actually win, and then that she wants Casey to win more than she wants herself to win. And to me, I was like, all right, can we just wrap this up then? Nani gets the second round, so we have one to one, but Casey goes all out and wins against Nani in the third round, winning two to one. Nani is eliminated from these finals, so now we have the final six, and this is where we have another format change. So now with Casey and Kyle winning their elimination rounds, the choice is up to them. They can either be paired up with each other, which they both say no very quickly, or they can pick whoever they wanna be paired up with the rest of these finals. Kyle picks Tori, which if I'm Tori, I'm excited because if I can't have CT, I'll definitely take Kyle, especially seeing how Devin performed in the first part of these finals, in the first day of these finals. So Kyle and Tori are gonna be paired up with each other. Casey now gets to choose, and of course she's gonna pick CT. Now CT does say that he is a bit nervous being paired up with Casey because of what happened last season in the finals, but he thinks that she will be able to keep up, be strong, want this win, so he's excited to be paired up with Casey, and that means that Devin and Emmy are gonna be paired up with each other. For the last part of these finals, the final stretch, 
You are gonna have to run up a mountain, find a code for your safe, memorize your code, come down and unlock your safe. The first pair to open up their safe and retrieve the black diamond will win and they will have to make a decision. They will have the whole $1 million at their disposal and they have the decision if they want to either keep the whole 1 million for themselves or split it with second and third place and they get to decide how much they split with the rest of the teams if they want to share it. TJ blows the horn and all the way up this mountain, CT, Casey, Tori, and Kyle are neck and neck. They're swapping up first and second with Devin and Emmy way in the back. And you have to give this to Devin because he's just like dying going up this mountain. He says that he can't push in any further and he's just done. Like he is absolutely done. He is secured third place. He just wants to finish. So he is eligible to get some money. Once everybody gets up to the code, they find out that it's 20 digits long. So they have to split it up. Each member of the teams take half the code. So one person gets 10 digits, the other person gets 10 digits. CT and Casey are the first to leave, to head down to their vault first. Tori and Kyle take a little bit extra time and then they start heading down. Casey lags back a little bit because she is nervous about her knee. Uh, this is bringing up memories from last season. She wants to take it safe. The good thing is that she keeps up with Kyle. So. As they're moving down the mountain, she keeps up with him and then she is able to pass him when it's like a stretch and we're on more of like solid ground, more even ground. And so CT is at the vault going like, Casey, hurry up. CT and Casey are the first ones at their safe. They're yelling their combination into the keypad, but then we get a little, uh, 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 they get it wrong. Tori and Kyle get to their keypad and they're punching it in as fast as they can, but they fat finger a button or they say it wrong. And so they get the vault code wrong. The way it is edited, it's trying to make it seem like both are getting multiple guesses wrong. But I think CT and Casey actually got it on the second try when they pushed it in because they kept on saying the same phrase over and over again where Casey's like, oh, say your portion. And CT's like, I'm the back portion. You gotta say your portion first. They said that a couple of times. So the editing was a little off. They were able to punch in the code correctly, open up their vault, get the black diamond, and they win making CT back-to-back -back champs, and we also get back-to-back -back Big Brother champs with Casey winning her first challenge championship. Kyle and Tori are like seconds behind CT and Casey, but they get second place. And then Devin impresses TJ and everybody else by punching in the 20-digit code by himself. He didn't even ask Emmy for her portion and he opens it up. If the most impressive thing you do in a finals is memorize a 20 digit code, you're, you definitely secured third place. <laughs> As the winners, CT and Casey have to make a decision on if they want the whole 1 million for themselves or split it up. They decide that they're going to split it up where they will receive 800K and then they will give 100K to both second and third place. And so that means that CT and Casey each get 400K and then everybody else will get 50K and everybody's excited. Personally, I think I would do second place getting 150K because I think they deserve it a little bit more for beasting it out and being so neck and neck with you in first place than say third place, I would have done 800K, 150 and then 50 and split the third place 25K, 25K. But Casey says that they all worked together on the season. They did a vet alliance. They were pushing each other. They all helped each other get to this point. So they wanted to make it a little bit more even, which you know what? You do you. It was your decision and everybody's excited to have 50K and that's it. Those are the finals. That is the ending to season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies. I couldn't believe it has come. Now we're just waiting on the reunion on the next two weeks, and then this season is in the books. But now I turn it over to you. What do you think about these finals? Let me know that in the comment section below. What are your overall thoughts? What do you think about the elimination matchup? What do you think about all the checkpoints and legs? And what do you think about the winners being CT and Casey? Did you call it? Let me know that in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. Before this video ends, I wanted to mention that on Sunday, December 19th, I'll be having a live season review of Spies, Lies, and Allies with my friends Angie and Charles. It's kind of like how we did the season review last season for Double Agents. We'll go through the cast, we'll go through the rookie class, we'll go through the vets and the daily challenges, eliminations, giving them all grades, talking about our overall thoughts. And let me tell
tell you right now, this is gonna be a very interesting conversation. We're gonna have very big opinions on this season and it's gonna be a lot, a lot of fun. Join us at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on December 19th, this Sunday, for that live. Also, I got Challenge All-Stars Season 2 episode review and recap, as well as Friday's Tiny Table Dog, and much more content coming very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching, and until then, peace.